So, all right, turn it over to Sarah. Well, we need to start with our updates. So we can do a welcome okay. and then we can do the bill updates. And okay. most of them are on your side. Um, okay. Anyway, are you ready? Yeah. You got to go. All okay. right. Good morning. Good morning. It's Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah. Everything's In every way. completely <laughs> normal. Don't worry. So good morning on uh, on a gray, rainy Friday. Uh, the world is kind of upended from where we were two weeks ago when we uh, when we left for town meeting week. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to give you an update and uh, help you understand to the extent that we understand uh, what's going on and, and where we're heading with our climate priorities. So this Senate's been hogging all the action uh, on our bills because uh, the House did such great work on global warming solutions. Uh, earlier this week, my committee on finance, Senate Finance, moved out S-267. This is the 100% renewables, 20% of that in-state uh, on a vote of six to one. So mm -hmm. we feel pretty good about that. It's now in uh, Senate Natural Resources and Energy. I'm not sure what they're going to do with it, but it's moving along. Um, we also moved, and I apologize, I forgot the number, but in my Senate Ag Committee, we moved the uh, s 273, I think it is, uh, farm to school, a little incentive to get more local food uh, into schools. And boy, uh, if there was ever a time where people are recognizing yeah. our need to be more locally dependent, it seems like these days. Excellent. Uh, we also move forward the efficiency update. So this is uh, pushing efficiency Vermont into all fields efficiency, continuing that work. It's this evolution, it's too slow, it bothers me that way. Mm -hmm. but. We moved it out, I think, uh, on a vote of uh, five to one, one person missing uh, out of Senate Finance. That's S337. That'll be on the floor uh, the next day or two. And TCI, uh, uh, an amendment to make it clear the governor has the authorization to join Vermont into TCI, is uh, expected to be added to S337 on a floor amendment. We did hope that was going to be today. I think it'll be Tuesday, given everything that's going on around here. So this is a, a soft uh, authorization because we don't have the data yet. We don't know what the program design right. is yet, and um, and uh, but it will specify what if we do join TCI, what how the revenue should be used. Uh, it'll be no. I don't think. I think it's more general than that. So okay. so this is just to catch everybody up. This is the 12 state uh, transportation climate initiative from New York over, over to Maine, down to Virginia, about a third of the country's economy, trying to come together on a cap and invest system to help us uh, mitigate transportation emissions and invest in sustainable transportation options. Um, the agreement among all of those states is thought to be uh, We'll, is, is believed that it will be finalized sometime this spring. Okay. And in a normal world, we'd be gone by mid-May, and so we may well be gone. So, so I think the bill and uh, the amendment, and it's being worked on is still, is something like, Governor, you have the authority to sign us on. Here are some of the things to keep in mind, chiefly is, would we be involved even if we're not signed on because our fuel comes from Massachusetts and New York, which are two states that are likely to sign on. So we, we may pay the compliance costs and then we want to be sure we're getting the benefit. So th then there is a chance that by not adopting this, we could be paying the price and not getting any benefit. Okay, that's easy enough. So it may sort of Signal that exactly how we do that, I don't know. But at a minimum, the legislature wants to be sending a signal to the governor that we're very interested in this and, mm -hmm. and we, we have that authority. Yeah. The timing is tricky, it really is tricky. Right. Um, so that is moving forward. Uh, the Senate Transportation has been discussing that this week. And again, uh, if it had been a more normal week, I think we would have seen that today on the floor. I expect at this point to see it Tuesday. And then S220, this is the uh, the idea of uh, our professions that are regulated by the state, plumbers, HVAC, uh, realtors, all those yeah. guys, getting them in on the climate game and helping, uh, giving them some tools to help promoters right. as they come into our house and help tell us about our new furnace, what new furnace we should get. 
we really need them to be understanding the programs, understanding the climate goals of the state, mm -hmm. and understanding incentives, helping Vermonters make those decisions. So all of those are moving. Um, and that feels good and, and satisfying. But. However, <laughs> because it's Friday the 13th and the world has stood on its head at this moment, um, we're, we're unsure of what the response uh, is going to be in the legislature with respect to uh, needing to respond to coronavirus. We, uh, we have a lot of committees right now, at least on the House side, who are um, taking a time out from their crossover scramble to think about uh, any adjustments that might need to be made to help Vermonters um, weather the storm of coronavirus. Um, and there's a little bit of uncertainty about whether the legislature will continue to meet in person, whether we'll take a couple weeks and um, and see if, if we can um, uh, keep the virus from spreading um, by not coming together in person. Uh, so there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Yeah, and we work in a building with hundreds of people, a lot of seniors, mm -hmm. and a lot of tiny rooms, mm -hmm. you know, and, and those are not great elements. And... I'm getting more and more convinced that we have an obligation um, to be protective. Uh, obviously, everybody does, but because we may need to respond. I mean, you, you, your people are starting to talk about like what happens when people get are are delayed out of work. They work hourly, and then their mortgage gets tripped up. Right. You know, we gotta maybe. And what do what do parents do if their kids' schools close, but they still have to go to work? That's and right. what about those young Vermonters whose only two meals of the day are breakfast and lunch yeah. at school? By the way, the U.S. Uh, uh, Secretary of Ag mm -hmm. did make it clear already that They're schools gonna... can continue to offer up lunches sort right. of like we do in the summer in some places. Right. But uh, what, if, what happens if the state mandates the child care uh, centers close? That deals with parents. But then we don't fund, you know, schools is one thing because they're funded through public dollars. Child care workers are not. And so those right. people are out of their, out of their jobs. So yeah. we may have to work with the unemployment fund. Fortunately, right now is, is, is robust, but it's all, all turned upside down. Right. And for Sarah and I and, and everybody, you know, we've been cranking on all of these, doing a lot of organizing to make this agenda, our climate agenda, real. And suddenly we're faced with this very real challenge. That, right. So we're, we're very uncertain at this moment about whether, um, whether it's realistic to expect that we'll continue to, to um, see passage of these climate priorities. And uh, if you have thoughts on that, please reach out to us and yeah. share those thoughts with us. And, um, and we're gonna continue to strategize about how we move forward with these very important um, agenda items uh, because I, you know, I would be bitterly disappointed if uh, if an immediate pandemic crisis caused us to drop all of the work that we've done here um, on the other looming crisis, which for many people is not as immediate right, as right. The, a pandemic, um, but it really should be. Well, and it's it's yeah, right, much longer term, slower, and much more deep impact. Potentially ways, yeah. more devastating. I, I I must say, I take. Slight hope, that's a weird word, uh, in the reaction. I mean, to, to coronavirus, like people are having tons of meetings and trying to figure out strategies and what's the right approach. Yeah. That is the response we need around climate, I right? Know. And so maybe we're paving some. Maybe uh, we're testing the sense yeah, of urgency it, yeah, that we yeah, need yeah, to right, bring right. to the climate crisis. And, and, and that's enough. Domestic it, yeah, climate. well, hey, uh, somebody's. <laughs> uh, also, emission reduction in the world right now right. Have, have, have yeah. radically declined. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just, you know, uh, well, that's horrifying, right? We don't want these sort of pandemics to, to uh, be the solution. They're not the solution. Mm -hmm. It does offer some idea that, hey, maybe we could actually do this and maybe we need to be a little less cavalier about our transportation. And, right. You know, things like that. Maybe we um, could do more virtual meetings instead of driving. Yeah. 
Yeah. So thanks, Bob. Good thing you're <laughs> speaking of virtual meetings. Um, we need to wrap this up because I have so many people waiting for me to do virtual yeah, meetings. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry to, to jump no in. No problem. There, but... Thank you, Bob. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. Please reach out via email. We'll, uh, we'll still be here trying to figure out how to move things forward. Giving it our all. I really appreciate you guys. Just wanted you to know that. <laughs> we appreciate you, Bob. Thanks.